Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 3.7, the sum of cubes and the difference of cubes. So you do need to memorize the sum of cubes and the difference of cubes, just like you memorized x squared minus y squared equals x plus y times x minus y. This is the difference of squares. So it's very similar. Um, it does follow a pattern, so I'm going to try to help you to memorize it that way because it is a little intimidating to look at it. So you'll fr the first thing that you'll notice is that there's actually a pattern. x cubed and y cubed are on this side, and then you get x, y, x squared, x, y, y squared. So the only thing you have to really worry about is where the pluses and the minuses go. So if you start with a minus, you're going to put a minus right away. And each of them gets two pluses, so you can put the two pluses on the inside like this. If you start with a plus, then you start with a plus on this side as well. And the minus goes in as soon as possible. So this spot is taken, that means it's going to go right here, and then you put a plus on the outside. Or you can just memorize that y squared always has the plus, and then these switch depending on what the question is asking you. But any, in any case, you have to figure out some mnemonic for yourself to memorize this. Okay. The rest of the lesson is actually going to be just these four examples. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and pause the video, do it on your own, and then check back to see if you have the right answers. Or you could follow along as I do them. It's up to you, whatever you would like to do. So I'm going to start with 27x cubed plus 125. We know that 27x cubed is actually 3x cubed, and 125 is actually 5 cubed. So if you like to write it out, you can do this. If you want to skip it, you can. And we're just going to do this pattern here, x cubed plus y cubed, because this is a plus. So we get 3x, the first one, plus the second one. Then the first one squared, don't forget to square the coefficient, minus the two of them multiplied together, 15x, plus the second one squared, so 25. And that's it. You can double check to see if this is factorable. If it's a quadratic, you can use the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. Um, in this case, it's not, so we're good to go. This one is just a reminder that you should always common factor first, if possible. In this case, we can common factor a 7x out. So x cubed plus 64. 64 is 4 cubed. So we'll just do it in exactly the same way. So x plus y, so the first one plus the second one. The first one squared minus the two multiplied together. And actually, you have the two numbers here. You can just copy them in, 4x plus the second one squared, 16. And there you go, completely factored. Two more to go. x to the 9 minus 5, 12. So x to the 9, you'll notice, is actually x to the 3 to the 3 and 512 is actually 8 cubed, and so we can use this information. So if it is a factor, or sorry, a multiple of 3, then you can use the difference of cubes, so just watch out for that. Um, so it's the first one minus the second one. Oops, don't forget that cube there. And then the first one squared, plus the two of them multiplied together plus the second one squared, 64. And then you'll notice that actually this is not factorable, but this is x cubed minus 8, so we do have to keep going with it, um, because 8 is actually 2 cubed. So we get x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4 times the other part, x to the 6 plus 8x cubed plus 64. This is one of my favorite tricks, for sure, that I will use all the time. So always look out to see whether or not you can use the difference of cubes twice or not. Check. Here, I'll write a note for you. Can I use it twice? There you go. And this last one, you'll actually notice that this is x to the 6 minus y to the 6, which means I could do it as a difference of cubes, as in I can do x squared to the 3 minus y squared to the 3, or you can do it as a difference of squares. So you can do it as x cubed squared minus y cubed squared. See that? And um, so if you're deciding which one to do, you should start with the difference of cubes if possible, because it just gives us a better factoring. And uh, so 
you know, it's just better that way. You can try it this way and see how it works out, and you'll see you get less factors, so that's why. Um, so we're going to go ahead and treat this as a difference of squares. Ends up being x cubed plus y cubed times x cubed minus y cubed. And of course, these are both factorable, so we get x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared times x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. Okay? And that is all. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Ask me any questions in class, and I will see you later.